Okay, so here I am again. I am having some technical difficulty tonight because my iPad kept um, losing the connection. So now I'm on a different iPad. So hopefully I will be able to bring to you what I meditated and heard that I had to bring to you tonight. Before I start, I want to thank all of you who have purchased Conversations with Mary because it is her desire to be in everybody's hands. Um, so just know that um, and to spread the word about what she wants to say to the world and to you. Um, I also wanted to thank all those who have bought tickets for the Reachfield Playhouse for November 8th. Um, ticket sales are going very well. We are now 13 seats from selling out the mezzanine and the balcony is beginning to sell. So um, I look forward to an amazing night filled with wonderful energy as I share with you some tools from the books to help you with your life and also a group reading and the beautiful music from Katona, I'm sorry, Raisa Katona Bennett. So it should be just a wonderful night. Also that night we will be selling the necklaces. So if you want a necklace, you don't have to have to pay for shipping. Um, it will be there and extra books if you want, but you do get a book with each um, ticket that you purchase. I will also be doing readings on Long Island and being at various bookstores and um, restaurants. So um, there's lots of ways that we can be together and I can share messages and, and some other good things. But um, tonight um, I decided that um, I would read a meditation from Conversations with Mary. Um, it's important that you know that the meditations came from her, not from me. So um, this is the one I chose for tonight because it seems to me that that's what people need for tonight. That's what I heard from, from your guides and from my guides and from Mary herself. So um, in a moment, I will start the meditation. For those of you who have never meditated before, um, please go into a place that is quiet that you can allow yourself to go deep into meditation. All you have to do is breathe and listen to my voice. Sometimes people like to dim the lights a bit, um, whatever works whatever works for you, okay? Um, and um, I would like to start right now. Okay, so this is from the chapter called What Happens When We Die? And it begins on page 106 in the book. So, gently close your eyes and breathe. Ask the angels to, sur to surround you in a brilliant, circle of light, love, and protection. Imagine a column of light from heaven moving into the crown of your head, spreading through your body and anchoring you to the core of the earth. Feel this wonderful light moving through your spinal column up from the tips of your toes. Allow your body to relax as you focus on your breath. Be aware of the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe in all that is good and right in the universe. Be aware that you are filling your lungs with the divine breath of God. Imagine your breath as a gentle wave moving back and forth and back and forth. Be aware that you are filling your lungs with the divine breath of God. Feel your body relax after each exhale as you release stress, negativity, and all else that doesn't serve you. Be conscious of how wonderful this feels. It is truly a gift to permit relaxation and peace into your mind, your body, and your soul. Allow the energy of Mary, of her love and peace, to enter your body with each inhale. Exhale all that doesn't serve you, all stress, anxiety, anger, animosity, self-recrimination, and anything else that might get in the way of connecting to heaven. As you move into this wonderful place of total relaxation, begin to feel a sensation of peace moving through your body. It feels wonderful. 
bask in this peace and relax. As you continue to feel the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe, imagine there is a silky pale white, pale blue light encircling your body. You feel its gentle vibration as it swirls around you, alerting and filling your senses. Just allow yourself to be as this blue vibration floats around you. Know that it is good. Let this vibration hug you gently. Recognize this vibration to be Mother Mary. Let her warm presence move your focus from your breath to the soft beating of your heart. Envision your heart becoming larger in your chest as you let her in. See the soft blue that is circling around you ease into your physical body and your heart. Imagine that your whole being is reaching out to her to be a part of her as you allow the soft blue light to fill your heart. Recognize that both you and Mary are blending energetically. You are becoming one essence. Delight in knowing that you are vibrating with her energy. As you breathe, begin to feel her more and more and allow yourself to go deeper. Now imagine a clear space, free of thought and allow your breath to wander in silence. Visualize Mary standing in front of you. Whatever image works for you is fine. She can continue to be the pale blue light or a feeling or perhaps you may want to personify her. Anything. Again, whatever seems right or feels right. See her reaching out her hand or see the energy expanding toward you. She says, you are one with the universe. You are one with all people. Come with me and we will find peace among humanity. Take her hand and let her lead you to an open field. You walk on the lush green grass and see a circle of people of all races, religions, ethnicities, and walks of life. You take the hand of a person of another culture and feel harmony as the energy of peace and love flows through you. You allow all judgment and prejudice that you harbor in your body to leave. Imagine this energy leaving you. Take your time. When you are ready, feel a sense of freedom. You have released that which separates you from other people. You now experience a love that is flowing around the circle, moving through your hands and connecting to your heart. It's as though everyone's heart is connected by one piece of thread. See these people. Know that the circle is the fabric of the universe. You no longer see the differences between the people, but rather the similarities. You hear laughter, one language, sense one face and one heart. Hail, hail Mary say, love yourself and love one another and you will be one with God and he will be pleased. Know that this is the first step toward acceptance and universal love. Allow yourselves to feel the blessings of heaven. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed that meditation. I would like to be doing more and more of these with you as the weeks roll on. If you have any questions for me tonight, I would be more than happy to entertain them. So let me look just to see if anyone's asking anything. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Oh, yes. Um, 
Carrie Darling Stanley is saying that she started a book club on Facebook um, for my book. Um, you can please join at Conversations with Mary by Anna Raimondi Book Club. So if you want to join there, it would be a wonderful thing. Maybe you could discuss the book with other people. I will show up now and then um, to chime in. And, um, but most of the live videos will be done from this page. But you can certainly go there and talk about the book. And if some of you have read the book and, and you liked it, um, you can post um, a review on Amazon.com. I would really appreciate that. So you can do that as well. Let's see if there's any questions at all. Um, I'm sure you're also you're all very relaxed now and basking in this energy that was brought forth from the meditation. If you have the book, you can record the meditations yourself or have somebody else record them and you can listen to them. I will probably at some point record them and put them put them all on YouTube. Okay, so Wayne is asking, or he's assuming that it takes practice to immerse in meditation. Some people have an easier time with meditation than others, so I would say yes, it takes practice. Not everybody can do it. And for, for some people, um, silent meditation is much better than a guided meditation. So you have to kind of find what works for you. But I will tell you this, meditation brings you to the seat of your soul. It takes you out of your, your conscious mind. When your mind starts chattering, the monkey chatter of things you have to do and, um, and pulls you out, that's only your ego saying that you don't have time for this. So let's do something else. Just you know, say to those thoughts, I will think about you later and continue on. Don't give up on it. We're just not a, we don't live in a culture that taught us how to do this as children. If we lived in the Far East, it would be much easier for us because they're taught but we're not. So just keep practicing, Wayne. If you had a hard time tonight, just to keep practicing. Just keep doing it, you know, whether it's guided or silent. And always focus on your breath. When you lose your, your focus, um, bring it back to your breath. Your breath is what will get you there. That should be your focus. If you're in a room that's brightly lit, you might want to cover your eyes with a scarf or something like that to block out the light. That'll also help. Um, thank you, Anne. She likes my book. That's sweet. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have any questions for me? If you miss the meditation, this will be posted on my page, and you can do it again and again. So I think that will be good. Um, it will also probably be posted on, on YouTube, so you can see it on YouTube. And again, like I said, we're going to um, eventually do all the meditations in the book. It's just right now I'm kind of running in 10 different directions and I can't stay still to do that. But I will. I will. I promise you. Okay. So Barbara Reedy is asking. Um, just curious. Ha with the book out now, has Mary continued to communicate and affirm the beginnings of the bo book's movement? Absolutely. Oh, without question. Um, and she's really excited um, because the things that are happening around me, to me, are miraculous. You know, um, I'm getting calls from a lot of different people. There's a lot going on, and she's doing it, you know, because I'm not. She's doing it. I mean, I show up. I show up where the, do where the doors are open. So, yeah, and she still communicates with me. She always has. But there's an excitement. There's an excitement around everything I'm doing, and everything I'm doing is to bring her to you, okay? You know, somebody asked me, you know, why the jewelry? Well, when you touch it. When you touch the jewelry, you remember your connection to her. You know, why am I speaking about this all over the place? Well, how else am I going to get the word across? I have to do it in that way. You know, I want the book to be in everybody's hand. You know, why is everybody getting a book at the Richfield Playhouse? You know, 500 people are going to get a book. Because that's what it's all about. It's, about. it's about her. It's about her words coming forward because she wants to heal us. So she's very happy. Very, very, very happy. Thank you, Wayne. Um, any other questions? Oh, thank you, Robin. Again, if you like the book, please um, do a review on Amazon. I would really appreciate that. Okay. 
What does Mary think of all the hatred in the world right now? Can God help us with changing this? We can help us with changing this, okay? What does she think about it? She deplores it. It's the evil in the world. You know, um, there's a good and a bad. There's a yin and a yang. It's, it's balance, and we have free will. The evil in the world is born from the, the fight for power and supremacy. That's what she's told me, and we need to move away from it. It wasn't started with that. The world was started in love from God who is love. Can God help us? Yes, but we need to go to God. You know, we need to pray. We need to pray that, that people, you know, you know, change the ways, that we ch and we change our ways. Prayer is not just about talking. Prayer is also active. It's living your life in a way that is good and right and compassionate, where we can raise our vibration. You know, the, the meditation I did tonight was about breaking down barriers, about seeing people beyond the color of their skin or their religion or what they do in their lives without judgment, without prejudice, seeing the connection between all of us because we really are all the same. Every one of us, we are the same. I'm the same as that person um, in China. You know, I'm connected to the person in Afghanistan. You know, it's not just, you know, where I'm from and my family of origin or where they're from. We're all connected. We come from one creator. When we recognize that, when we give up this fight for power and to be better than each other, you know, whether it's in our families, our communities, our nations, when we can do that, yeah, the world can be saved. But we need to pray. You know, this world has moved so far from where we came, from the Creator. You know, the Creator is supreme. That's what it's about. We need to pray in unison, and we need to believe that our prayers can be answered. You know, pray like this. Thank you, God, that we live in global peace now. You may not see it, but it's a prayer of faith. And that's where we need to pray. We need to believe. Because God doesn't want to hurt us. God wants to help us. It's us who hurt us. It's free will that hurts us. Free will is wonderful, but it's also, it can also be a bad thing. We're tempted. So absolutely. And I believe that with all my heart because Mary has told me that. She has told me it can be. It can be. This can be reversed. And we need to see it within ourselves to do so and move it forward. Okay. Um, hi, Jamie. Wayne is saying, pray bold prayers. I think what he's trying to say is, don't be afraid of, of what you're claiming, of what you're asking, okay? Because anything can be answered. And miracles happen every day. Every day. You know, we live in a world where, you know, people are frightened. We live in fear. Fear is the opposite of love. Let's go to love. Let's not be afraid. Let's say, we can do this. We can do this as a species. We don't have to self-combust. We can do this and let it happen. Let it flow because it can be. It really can be. Pray with your heart, with your soul, with your mind. Sing your prayers, say your prayers, but live your prayers. You know, don't be like the hypocrites, you know, who, who just talk the talk and can't walk the walk. It's so easy to talk the talk. It's so easy to seem pious because it's a sense of power and elevation. Don't do that. Live it because that's where the power comes from because then you connect to the power of God. Okay, are there any other questions? Again, the meditation that I did tonight will be posted on this page and you can do it again and it was from the chapter on connecting to heaven I believe is that what it was from let's say no, my memory is not great I'm thinking I'm just getting old it was from the chapter on what happens when we die so um, if you want to do that again I would go to that chapter there are um, the chapters in the book are um, buried. Why do you come to us? What is a soul? Pray with me. Why are we here? The power of faith. What happens when we die? Evil in the world, which kind of speaks 
to the question that I was just answering. Angels, enlightenment, finding harmony in today's world. So those are some of the chapters in the book that she brought forward that she wanted to speak about. There are many other things she wanted to speak about, but not everything could fit in this book. But, um, but someday we'll get them forward as well. Um, let's see. Um, so Wayne is saying, sometimes people are afraid to God because they turn to him for so long. But have they turned in pure faith? Have they turned in love? Have they turned in a place that is not out of desperation? Have they said their prayers by saying, I believe. I believe I am worthy to, for you to answer this. You know, um, it's not about, um, you know, disillusionment in, in terms of God forsaking us. We are not forsaken, okay? And it's also about praying as a people, you know, as all of us, you know, whether you're praying in your communities, you know, in your churches, in your temples, or whether you're praying with your family or praying by yourself. Again, these people who pray and are disillusioned, are they living a life that is compassionate? Is, are they raising the vibration, not only of their selves, but of the earth? You know, sometimes people pray that people, you know, shouldn't die, but we need to die. Those are, those are prayers that don't always get answered. The real prayer is, you know, help my loved one not suffer. You know, give me the strength to understand that we live to die, okay? The other prayers, let there be peace. We need to pray, all of us, and recognize there can be peace. But we have to believe it. They can't be hollow prayers. They can't be. You know, what are you all doing for, to bring peace through? You know, what do you talk about peace? Do you go around saying we're doomed? That is not a prayer. That is anti-prayer. You know, that's saying God is leaving us. We're abandoned. He is not abandoning us. And by the way, he is not a he or she. God doesn't have a gender. But I use he because it's just a pronoun that has been given to him. But understand that. That is not walking in faith. That is not walking in belief. We need to walk in the belief. We need to spread the word. That's why she wanted this book written. She wants to spread the word that we are all under her mantle and that she's praying with us. She gives us strength in prayer. That's what she's doing. And it's our level of belief. And the more people that join this parade, so to speak, the greater the miracle will be. We need to turn, all of us. And if it's one by one, or 10 by one, or 150 million by one, we need to get there as a species. Because look what's going on in this world. It's scary, okay? But you can't walk in fear. You have to say that we walk with the armor of God. And that was my Long Island that came out right there. Um, yeah, but we walk with God. And God wants the best. But there has to be faith and hope. We can't lose our faith. We can't lose our hope. Because if we lose our hope, there's nothing. Then we're doomed. Then we're giving into fear. Then we're giving into the dark side. And the dark side wants to take us over. The dark side wants to win. We can't let that happen. Um, thank you, Barbara. Do I think I'll be doing an audio version of the book? Yeah, but it's not going to come out till next year. Next year, um, the audio version will come out um, with any luck. It also will be translated into Spanish. And um, what else is that? I, it will be, in, it'll, you know, it's in paperback. But it's not going to be in paperback for a long time. And this is like the kind of book that I think, you know, you want to hold in your hand. I mean, yeah, you can get it on Kindle. I'm not a Kindle. You know, I'm not a Kindle person. But as long as you have it, and you can record the meditations and do the meditations, I think that you will, you will feel her. Feel her, not me, you're not feeling me. I just asked the questions. She answered the questions. So you will feel her. You know, I mean, you can read my story in the book, um, in the introduction, but that's not what this book is about. This book is about her, all about her. So um, I hope to do an audio. I think they plan on me doing that, but the book has to be out a while before that happens. So I would love to do that. Whether I'm talking or someone else is talking, it doesn't matter. Just as long as the words are out there. 
okay? Yeah, so wait a say we also need to be afraid, we stop being afraid to talk to God. So many people are. So many people are afraid of surrendering to God. You know, I talk all the time about surrendering. So many people say, well, I don't want to surrender. And let it be God's will. What if I don't like his will? Well, his will is to help you. You know, his will is to bring to you what you need in your life. I live in surrender every day. I surrender myself, my husband, my children. And it's brought me great happiness. And also it has opened up doors across the board. You know, as many of you may know, this book happened, you know, like kind of like from left field, not kind of very from left field. And I don't even have, a, I don't even have a literary agent. You know, I got a book deal in like a month and a half or two months. That was it. Nobody does that because it wasn't me. It was her. It was all Mary and God. The door was open. He wants her to come through as his messenger. He wants her to. She's familiar to us. She was a person. You know, in the book, she talks about losing a child. As only a mother can talk about that. We can relate to her. And so God has, you know, put her on, on this mission that she so wanted to help her, to help us. And for everyone, she doesn't come through just for, you know, the Catholics. She's coming through for the Muslims. She's coming through for the Jewish people. She's coming through for the Hindus, for the Buddhists, for everybody. Because again, she repeats over and over again, we are one. Okay, let's see. Well, Anne, if I could figure out how to do a podcast or any of these people around me, I would love to do a podcast. That would be great. Um, right now, I don't really have the time to do it, but when maybe when things slow down a bit, when the book, you know, tours stop, you know, I'll be going to Colorado, California, Arizona, and New Jersey, and Florida, and um, probably Boston. So I'll be making my rounds. When I finally slow down, I will do all of that. And hopefully I'll have someone at that point who can help me. Um, so Catherine asks, how is Mary's message different today versus when she appeared in Fanner? And that's not different. It's not different. You know, her message has always been about love and peace. You know, keep in mind that, um, you know, when she speaks, it's, it's sometimes it's interpreted in a way that it's only for a certain group of people. Her message is for everyone. How can we heal? If we can only heal one segment, one segment of the world, how can we heal as a species if it's not for everyone? So I think, you know, for the first time, she's really speaking about coming to everyone in the world. That's the only difference. You know, she even says a lot of the things that she says to me in the book are said in a different way that she has said it to the visionaries at Medjugorje or Fatima or Lords or any of the other places. But it's the same thing. It's just, um, she's saying it in a different way. You know, if you read the book, you know, you might see the parallels. Yes, she throws in a little bit of more modern things because I'm asking her those things. You know, the visionaries were only receiving. They weren't really asking her. And she just, you know, was kind of downloading into them, but I'm asking her questions. So it's a little bit different. So, um, but the messages are the same. It's, it comes down to, Pray, praying. It comes down to um, living your life and being compassionate and loving yourself because how are you supposed to love anybody else if you don't love you? So it's the same message, you know, keeping your focus on God. You know, um, that's what it's about. And recognizing the spark of divinity is within each one of us. We were made in the image of God. The image of God is the image of love. And that's what's important, that we feel it within ourselves and we know that we're worthy and not being afraid. You know, just like we shouldn't be afraid of asking a mother or a father things, we certainly shouldn't be afraid of asking God. Okay. Yes, Jamie is saying more people of all faiths need to hear this message. And I hope they do listen. I hope they do hear it. Everybody hears it. Again, we can't be saved by just being in a, in a certain segment of society we need to be saved across the board, across the world. We all need to get on this page. This is what we're about. You know, I keep telling people, 
You know, every minute we live, we're a minute closer to death. We live to die because the great reward is at the end. This, this, this life is, is hard. It's really hard. You know, it's about what happens at the end and, and the glory of being, you know, in, in the kingdom at the end. That's what it's about. So we have to do it in this world. We have to find the peace in this world so that maybe someday, someday these two dimensions will meld. And then there'll be total peace. Then there'll be everything we want. And there won't be any longing. There won't be any need, you know, to have all these other things, you know, that we worship above God. We shouldn't be worshiping the golden calf. I like nice things. I do. But I don't worship them. I really don't. You know, if they were taken away from me, okay. We all need money to survive. We all need to put food on our tables. Yeah, that we need to do. You know, but God always provides. Always, always, always. Um, hi, Maria. I'm so sorry uh, about the loss of your father. I have been praying for you and your family. Okay, um, so unless there are any other questions, you know, you might want to listen to this again and some of the messages that have been brought forth. Um, if you pick up the book, I, I, I'm going to hold it up, but I know it's, it's opposite. So I think you see the words opposite, you know, Conversations with Mary. It's a pretty cover though, isn't it? Um, but, um, you know, the, a lot of the questions that you're asking are actually in the book. And it's her answering them, you know, and you can hear the cadence of her, her voice. You know, if you, as you read it, you really can, you really can feel her. You know, I, I'm in the process of rereading it because again, it came through me. Okay. Even with all the editing, when you edit a book, it's about like fixing things and moving things. And there's not really focus on, on what's really going on in the book. So I, I have to reread it. And a lot of it, I don't even remember, you know, writing it, putting it down, but obviously I did. And she obviously, you know, used me as her vehicle to, to write it. And this has been, this is my mission to help bring her words forward so that our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, you know, can somehow find peace and maybe we can find it in our lifetimes. Wouldn't that be great if we can find it? If the world can find it, she says it can be. Um, so, somebody is saying something here. So Barbara is saying that in turning away from God or being fearful of God, it seems that people have forgotten that he is our father, our creator, and he loves and delights in us. He is thrilled to hear from us. In connecting with him, do not be afraid, but rather be embraced. You know, fear, again, comes from um, lack of faith and love. If you love God and you can connect with God, you can connect with love. It doesn't, he doesn't care what you call him. You know, you know call him the great love, because that's really what it is, the great love. The great love. Connect to that great love and you will feel it, and your world will blossom. Surrender to God. I can attest my life got so much better when I finally said, you got me. After years of trying to control and losing that battle um, and being unhappy with it, even though it, you know, it looked like I had everything. When I finally said, nope, this isn't working. You got me. You really got me. If you open the door, I'll walk through it. You know, my life belongs to you. Now that doesn't mean I'm not a normal person. Um, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy things that normal people don't enjoy. I go out with my friends, I go to parties, I have children, you know, um, I do my thing, you know, but I'm also always connected and I'm not perfect. You know, none of us, you know, are per is perfect. We're all infallible or fallible. I'm sorry. You know, just live your life. You don't have to be walking around chanting in the streets. But you need, do need to feel the chanting in your heart. And that's important. Really important. 
You will find your happiness if you do that. And you will find peace. I guarantee it. Okay, well, thank you all tonight for listening. I hope that you are able to do the meditation. Thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for listening to her words and letting them bring me, bring them to you. Because it means a lot to her. And so it means a lot to me. Thank you and God bless.